Guten Tag, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Wow, that's a bright screen projector. Okay, I will stand over here. Uh, my name is Ryan. You might know me from the Joomla project, I guess. <laughs> um, but today, uh, I'm happy to talk to you guys about going beyond the content management system and what, what lives beyond the world of Joomla uh, in hopes that uh, we can be a little more educated about what we can do beyond the content management system and integrating it with business intelligence tools and other things that are out there used by small businesses and large enterprise services. Wow, there's more than three people here. That is very nice. Uh, considering that I was up very late last night, I figured that uh, maybe three people would show up and we'd sit in the corner over here <laughs> doing this presentation together. So I'll have to change this slide for posterity purposes. Uh, so the title of the presentation has the word Salesforce in it. Just a couple things to say. First, I don't work for Salesforce. Uh, I don't make a commission <laughs> by talking about these services. This is purely for education so we can have an example that we can learn from as a community about doing business integration services uh, with Joomla. Um, and like I said, most importantly, this is an opportunity for us to have best practices, things that we can learn for our own businesses uh, to move forward and be more effective in the work that we're doing. Um, and first, can I see a show of hands of people that uh, do web development or web design or use Joomla as part of their business, not just a hobby? Okay, great. Because part of what I'd love to get out of this session and the session that I'm doing later on today is really have an opportunity for us to share in what we've learned and how we can become more effective as businesses because if we can do that, I think we can spread the word of Joomla. I think we can become better and more profitable businesses and continue to grow the community over time. So this is not just a demo or tools related session. This is also learning more about best practices for lead processing, for business intelligence, for reporting and dashboarding. You're gonna get it all together here mashed up with integration with Joomla. Sound good? Okay, sweet. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of data therapy. <laughs> this isn't just going to be about a, a demo of tools, but I want us to just relax and feel comfortable with the knowledge of knowing we're not doing the most we can with our data. And I would posit that using Joomla is not necessarily, necessarily the way we as business owners and entrepreneurs are going to be able to get a better handle of the business data that we need to be more profitable. Uh, it's more of a square peg round hole session where uh, a lot of us might be using a number of different tools and we're looking for ways to, um, to manage data more uh, effectively. Uh, so because I hate lecturing and now I'm finding myself lecturing, I, I was the president of uh, OSM and now I'm not and I was hoping I'd have more of a collaborative space here, but imagine that we were all sitting in a circle together. And through the presentation, if you have a question, please raise your hand. If you want to just yell at me, that's fine. If you'd like to play music over my voice, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's 9.30 in the morning, okay? So I'm very happy uh, with that. Um, so what I'd like to do is just um, do a little bit of analysis to start. You know, it's, it's 9.45 now. We'll start diving deep into this. Uh, so let's talk about the costs of attending this session today, okay? Uh, so first of all, thank you all for having a lack of sleep. I understand that that's, that's a challenge. I got very little sleep myself last night. Uh, assisting me by helping me earn an award last night and hanging out with Elvis and Penguins and lecturing yet again today. I really appreciate that. Um, 
We've got uh, a, a number of other sessions that are going on that you could have been going to. I won't be talking about any code today, uh, and I'm no longer allowed to say Joomla rocks anymore. Uh, that might not be true, but I think enough people are tired of hearing me yell into microphones. But I'll give you all of the great benefits of what we're going to learn today in the next 45 minutes. Um, first of all, lots of cool new buzzwords that you can impress your boss with. And if you're in a small business, your entrepreneurial friends will find you much cooler if you start throwing around these buzzwords. Um, we're going to find ways to help our businesses make money. I want us to see us making more money, being more profitable. And we can do that by keeping track of our, our data. Um, learning best practices about mission critical data. So not just the content or the marketing, but what happens after that data comes in from your website? What can we be doing to, to harness all of the value of that? Obviously, looking at the tools themselves and seeing how a content management system and a CRM tool can integrate uh, together more effectively. Uh, and then some more techniques and models that you can walk away with. Uh, so I know there were costs of waking up early, but I think this is going to be pretty beneficial to you guys. And I won't be embarrassed if you decide to walk out if these don't sell you <laughs> for staying the next 45 minutes. Uh, okay, so what is uh, a CRM? I know that people are probably too tired to shout out answers. So I'm just going to tell you. Uh, one way to look at it is uh, customer or consumer relationship management, a way for you to store information about your customers or prospective customers. And then for us folks in the nonprofit world, you can look at it as constituent relationship management, your supporters, your donors, your advocates. And I'm curious, are there folks here that work with nonprofit or charities or government organizations? All right, cool. Good to be with good friends here then. Uh, so what does it provide, it being CRM services? Well, um, I like to think of it as a, a safe harbor for your most protect or your most important data. I like to think of it as a way for us to have a very standardized model of where data should be stored, how it should be processed, different workflows we can go through to be more effective and follow best business practices. Uh, I'm getting used to this keynote iPhone app, and sometimes I don't know how to control it. Uh, business intelligence and reporting. So it's great that all of the data is in there, but we really need to find a way to understand it, make quick uh, decisions based on that data rather than decisions based on the gut. Let's look at the raw data and try to make better decisions because of that. Uh, you can do that with dashboards and, and keyboards, or dashboards and key performance indicators. So what I'd like to do next is to go through some of the, the key business scenarios that we see and reasons why people are using CRM services. Uh, I know a lot of folks that I talked to yesterday and the day before are using things uh, like spreadsheets or they've got a lot of email traffic going back and forth. And they say, you know, this has been working well for us, um, but there could be ways that we can avoid the lost email or the spreadsheet that got corrupted or the spreadsheet that's just on one person's computer and nobody else has access to it. So first, uh, the first scenario is, is this, um, you know, you want people to know your company exists, that you have some products and, and services. You do this through things like email campaign and, and advertisements and all of this data is to go out to the world and just to, to shout and to hopefully shout effectively so that people know that your Joomla product or that your services exist so they can know to say, hey, maybe this is a business worth looking at and, and talking to. Uh, next, let's say you've got this big group of folks that you've been shouting out to and they start coming and walking to your virtual storefront. Well, we don't really know who they are. They, they know who we are as a business, but we don't know who they are. Should we give them the, the time of day? Do they really need our service? Um, I'm curious, uh, how many people here have heard of BANT valuations before, or BANT qualifying? All right, oh yes, one, great, good, okay. So this is where, uh, again, I know, I feel like I'm in college again. This is so early for business <laughs> analysis. Um, but I would really love for all of you guys to go back to your businesses and be thinking about BANT, 
when you're going through qualifying potential customers to work with. So BANT stands for budget, authority, need, and time. So people are coming into your business, they're looking at what you have. If you're a design firm or a development firm, this could be a tens of thousands of dollar project. This could be a very long proposal you need to write. How do we determine if this is worth our time dealing with this? And what I would recommend has been helpful for us at PicNet is these four items. Uh, budget, being comfortable and asking them, what is your budget? <laughs> How much money do you have to spend to work with us on this particular opportunity? The second one is authority. So the person you might be talking to could be the communications director, maybe they're somebody in the accounting department, I'm not sure, we all have different businesses. But asking that person, do you have the authority to make the final decision? And if not, who would be the right person that I should be writing my proposal to to make sure that the final arbiter of this decision is, is feeling the love, has some sort of an input, they understand the value of what you're offering. Uh, need, trying to understand from this prospective customer what are their needs and at what scale do they have a need for your product? Is it something that they could live without? Or is it something they absolutely need, they must buy it from you and you are their only option for success? Uh, and then finally is timing. Is this something they need today, yesterday? <laughs> Normally a lot of people come to us with the fire drill saying, I needed this yesterday and my executive director is yelling at me and the board of directors hates our website. Uh, being able to know what that timing is. And what I would recommend is putting this on a scale for each one of these of zero to 10. And then adding that up, and the closer you get to 40 or whatever you wanna use for your own calculation, will be a great indicator as you're working with all of these different prospects to see what's the most valuable ones to work on. Not just the ones that I think I can win, but also the ones that have the best BANT valuation. Does that make sense to you guys? I'd really recommend that for all of our Joomla businesses because we're in such a large uh, and popular community that we're probably getting a lot of opportunities coming through. Let's spend time working on those that have the best alignment with what we provide and are the most profitable for our businesses. So this is all part of the qualifying process. And this is where I need to set my iPhone to not shut itself off automatically because it just went ahead and decided to stop talking to my computer. No connection available. Well, I will stop walking then. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you also, so people come into the door, you had a good relationship with them, you realize this is probably something worth doing, I've done my BANT evaluation, and, and this is, looks like a, a good prospect for us. We need to go through the process of, uh, of sales going from perception all the way down to the negotiation of being able to close that deal. And this is a general step and stage you can go through, and I'll make sure to put this online. But the goal is at the end of the day, the sales process, we wanna sign that contract, we want people to check that box and to, to do the checkout process and to, to buy our products. Uh, go through the, uh, the project execution, obviously we've all have our own either waterfall or agile product uh, development or project development. I won't stand that too long. After you finish the project, the sales process should still continue. You finish the process, we want to make sure that these clients stay for a long time. So the next phase is gonna be client retention and making sure that we keep them with us, either if we're selling a product or a service, by making sure we provide great customer support by making sure we have good marketing to keep them up to date as to the kinds of products and services that we can continue to help them with. Uh, and then finally, I call this last phase client enhancement because they are now a, a client of yours, you've been providing them good service, and now you're seeing new opportunities to grow. We all know that it's much easier to provide new sales to existing clients than it is new sales to people you've never met before. So why did I go through this small business process? Well, now I can't see what the previous or the next slides are, so we're gonna wing this together. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to give a little visualization of what's happening here. So we go from marketing, 
brought it into qualifying, go through to sales. We've done the sales, now we're delivering the product, we're retaining the clients, we're providing them enhancements, and then the circle just keeps going on and on and on. Even if you have an existing client, you should still go through your BANT analysis, you should still go through the sales process, you still need to deliver the product. Make sure that you're always cycling through this over and over again. Okay, so the CMS is just uh, one part of this, this big picture. Um, we need to be thinking about how everything aligns together. My argument is that Joomla and the CMS really lives mostly in the marketing side. And that once people come in, then we're able to work through them to make sure that we can qualify them through maybe a phone call or through emails, and then they do the final sale for our product-based businesses on our website as well. So we need to set visions and goals uh, and metrics as companies, but we really need to find ways to measure success. And I, th I think a lot of us are so busy in what we're doing that we forget uh, to, to realize, like, how do we see if we've moved the needle? How do we uh, tell if we've been more successful this year versus last year, not based on revenue, but maybe efficiencies, maybe other profitability numbers? Um, we need to be tracking this data. And if we're tracking it manually, we're never going to do it. Uh, you know, I'm always looking for time tracking uh, tools that make it easier for my team to automatically track their efficiencies to see what we're working on so we can tell what's most efficient about the company and what's not. And this is where I think a CRM, not a content management system, but a customer relationship management system really comes into play. So we want to be able to allow decision makers, yourselves, bosses, and others in your company, to make decisions in real time. We are so busy in the work that we're doing, we're designing amazing websites and building products, that we forget to be able to say, how do I determine what I'm going to do for the next quarter? Or how can I project my results for the next year? This stuff needs to be automated because we're small businesses. I think the majority of the Joomla community are businesses that are either sole entrepreneurs or maybe five, possibly up to 10 employees. We're small, we've got a lot on our plates. This stuff needs to be automated and easy for us to track. So it'd be nice if there was just a set of tools that allowed us to do all of this automatically, and I would posit that the tool that we found as a business that is very useful uh, has been Salesforce. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Salesforce tool so we have an understanding as what this stuff looks like, but I really want to make sure that this is not a Salesforce pitch or presentation while we are totally converted as a business, um, it's something that we should be learning about automation within our businesses to track this data. So Salesforce.com started off as Salesforce automation. It was really built for salespeople that were either in the field or in the home office, going through the sales process and finding that they were losing email or that they weren't keeping track of potential opportunities and they didn't have the metrics and data that they needed. It's a multi-tenant service, so this is pretty truly cloud-based services, uh, software as a service where you have the mothership that has all of the data servers. They must have a bazillion different uh, servers in their server farm, and all of the clients are accessing it through web browser. So there's no software to download, and it's now pretty much available across most parts of the world. Strong workflow functionalities, the goal being that if you take the time to set the different workflows that you're going through as a business and you align them in your software, we can get some nice automation going through. Um, a few years ago, maybe five years ago now, six years ago, they went from just basic Salesforce automation uh, to allowing people to build custom objects, or we call them just like MySQL tables. And as soon as they started to do that, people started to realize, well, gosh, this is more than just Salesforce automation. This is now kind of this database in the sky. And they actually have a new service called database.com, which is just a cloud-based database that you can spin up. Um, you can start for free. I think they charge some rate for other pieces of it. And that allowed businesses like ours to say, well, how can we use this to leverage Joomla? Like, how can we make sure that we now have this 
uh, this beautiful website, how can we track a lot of data from that that isn't related to just sales? It's related to, to other things like, say, event registrations. Um, and one of the things they've done to make this easier for folks is, uh, as, as any growing uh, public corporation, is they started to acquire a lot of interesting things. So just to give you a little example, they acquired this company called Jigsaw uh, that they renamed data.com. Um, has anybody heard of this before? D uh, Jigsaw? Okay, yeah. It's a, it's a little US-based right now, but it's growing. The concept is really cool. It's uh, crowd-sourced contact information. So if you go to this conference here, and if you were to take your business cards, and if you enter those business cards into something like Jigsaw, in return, you get credits for being able to pull other data from other individuals and business uh, contacts for free. So that's really interesting. If you're trying to call on uh, a business or a university and you want to see who's the marketing director in this gigantic tree, and rather than spending five hours making phone calls, something like Jigsaw allows you to kind of connect them together. Uh, they bought a company called Ripple that makes it very easy for businesses to evaluate their own employees through 360 reviews and through a typical review process, and all of that data goes into to one place. They picked up a company called Radian 6 that allows you to go ahead and see and track how your brand is doing on social media, from YouTube to Facebook to Twitter, and then have all of that data streaming into Salesforce uh, in real time. And then they have a product called Chatter, which works on a mobile device, it works on a tablet, it works on the desktop, it works on an application um, that allows you to have your, your private Twitter, essentially, but ties into all of the data that you've got in your CRM service so that when somebody is closing a sale, that could automatically pop up in your Twitter-like feed. If you have a document or a PowerPoint presentation or a video, that you want to share with your team, rather than sending out a thousand emails, their concept is store it once in your CRM service, share it through this Flickr, or Flickr, this Twitter-like service. So the goal is, that's great, we're adding the Joomla website on top of this and we're gonna have a lot of data coming in, but it'd be really nice if there were a way that one tool could help us process and understand through business intelligence what the heck we're doing. So uh, I thought I would just give you a very brief tour of what this tool looks like, and then I'm gonna spend the majority of the rest of the time actually talking about integration opportunities and brainstorming with you guys how your Joomla-based website could be talking to your own CRM tool or a CRM tool like Salesforce. So I don't have a, a pointer, and we don't have a pointer handy. Nobody has a red laser thing, okay. I can do this. <laughs> Um, so just a, a super quick tour, when you log into Salesforce, you, you see this, this is the home screen. Uh, towards the bottom it says My Tasks. That's where you can go ahead and just keep process of different things you're doing from writing proposals, etc. Your calendar that can integrate with uh, a Google calendar. Um, on the left hand side it just shows you some of the recent things you've been working on. And then across the top it shows you the different tabs, the different sections of Salesforce. And like I was talking about earlier, that same workflow that you should be going through as a business for your sales process from marketing to uh, qualification to sales, et cetera, is effectively mimicked in a tool like Salesforce. And this is not novel to Salesforce. I, I wrote that process up because Sugar does this, VTiger does this, a lot of other CRM tools do it as well. In this case, we have an example of uh, a campaign screen, and a campaign is when you're doing anything from, say, email marketing to uh, online advertising. You want to keep track of metrics to see how many people you're reaching and how effective your campaigns are. So if you're spending money on Google AdWords or if you're spending time pushing out email newsletters, is this really effective? And I'll show you later on that it's super easy if you have an automated CRM tool to, to do this. And if you tie it in with Joomla, you're gonna get that data in real time of people coming to your website. And we're gonna tie that 
right away to a lead that gets created so that somebody can get an email notification to call that person up and to move through the sales process in a lot more quantifiable way. Uh, so you have this concept of leads. Has anybody seen uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? the movie with Michael Douglas. All right, good, it's one of us, maybe two. <laughs> um, so uh, leads are like if I, if I walked up uh, to you and I said, uh, here's a stack of business cards, good luck. Maybe some of these are gonna be potential customers. We don't know who they are, but they're people and they might or might not be interested in working with us. A lead allows us to at least process that data in some place and go through a qualification process. So this is just Minnie Mouse, and here's some basic information we know uh, about Minnie Mouse and a potential transaction we have uh, with her. The real value of any CRM tool is it's great that you have all this raw data, and it's important that we automate it because none of us have the time to deal with it. But what we want to do is to have all that data in real time bubbling up into human readable reports, that we can see and make decisions on. So they have a, a process, and I know the other tools have this process, of being able to create custom reports. In this case, I have an opportunities report for this fictitious organization that's just showing me the, uh, the name of the opportunity of what I'm working on, what stage it's at, did I win this, is it pending? Uh, what's the fiscal period and then a potential amount and the age of it. You can custom build all sorts of interesting reports. Uh, and then what I love, uh, I've shaded out a lot of this because I wanted to show some interesting reports. So I showed PicNet's own reports. Um, this is what I live on every day. I, I wake up in the morning and I open my iPad. I'm like, okay, how are we doing? Refresh. How do we do yesterday as a business? How are we doing moving forward? I can see things like the top 15 deals we have open or looking at our pipeline by product. And it says here uh, by pipeline and stage type. So I can see over here, these are just the, the people that are just interested in prospecting with me all the way to this, uh, this piles over here of me writing proposals or us working through negotiations and contracts. We need to be able to just quickly see right away what's, what's happening within the business. Uh, gauges like this that show me sales that allows me to show accounts receivable. Uh, I was talking to uh, Thomas earlier from OSM about QuickBooks. I have people use QuickBooks or other accounting tools themselves? So if you're writing invoices, you really want to be able to get that data in with your CRM service as well so you can see how accounts receivable looks like um, and you need that invoice data to make that, that happen. Uh, and then one other screen here. What, what's nice about all of this is this just gets automatically created. I had to put a lot of time into thinking what are the key dimensions of the data that we want to track. But now that we as a business have that data there, or we know what we want it to, to look like, I can use this to see how well we're doing as to reminding myself of the types of people that we're talking to. So I have a, a gender demographic breakdown here of the people that are coming in to talk to me so that I can remember you know, the kinds of marketing and the kinds of communications we're doing to folks are overwhelmingly, in our case, to women, mostly to um, middle-aged women uh, professionals. And how we're communicating with them is important for us as, as a business. Okay, so as we're getting into the integration points, Let's say a couple of things. Obviously one, uh, Salesforce is not open source. And unfortunately there are a couple of business intelligence tools that are open source, but I found them really unwieldy to work with. I'm an open source uh, supporter, but not an open source zealot. So I'm using a Mac OS. <laughs> I use proprietary services like this. And if you're comfortable with that, uh, tools like this could be useful for you. There's lots of other competing services out there like Sugar CRM and VTiger and other great tools, I'm using this just as an example. Um, a tool like Salesforce is definitely not free. I put not cheap, but these tools start at anywhere from, I think it's $15 per user per month up to like $100 per user per month. Businesses can have one or two. You, you don't have to have a license for everybody at your company. You can just start with one or two and move on. So it's not cheap. But the big upsides, 
like I said, are the, these are cloud-based services. They're built in with best practices that you can just follow for us that are busy. Uh, the code base is well supported. And most importantly for what we'll be sharing today is that it has a very robust and open uh, API. And what's nice about that is I think the last data point that came out was something like 60 to 70% of the data going over Salesforce's servers are all coming through APIs. They're all web services. They're all applications. They're things that people have made to talk to Salesforce. So you're not just living in the screens that I showed you uh, before. Uh, I like this. Uh, effectively, the day that the business started, they opened the foundation, even though they hadn't brought in any revenue. But important to the company is to make sure that they have a sustainable business model for giving back to the community. OK. Everybody OK so far? I know this is kind of rough business on Sunday morning, but we're feeling comfortable. Uh, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities. A conversion process is just a way to say, how did I take that business card and move it into a project that we win? And what a conversion process allows you to do is to say, how can we automate this workflow? Rather than taking the business card and having to individually create all these different records, one for the company we're working with, which is the account, one for the person that we're working with, which is the contact, and one for the opportunity, which is the project we're trying to work on, all of these tools have a lead conversion process that makes it really easy for you to input data once. And then if you're going to go through the proposal process, you can normally click a button that will convert it to these three different things, just for your knowledge. Uh, getting intelligence in, good data, setting goals, setting metrics, building reports, displaying dashboards. What are some user stories for why we would want to hook up our website in Joomla with a CRM tool? Uh, well, I would say anytime you're doing a financial transaction, I think it's really critical to get that data out of Joomla or to have it live in Joomla for such a fraction of a second that it's going to live in that safe harbor. It's going to live in a very robust server. It's not going to be on a shared server at GoDaddy or somewhere else. We want this to be in rock solid, very secure uh, data servers because this is our most important, valuable information. Like, I do not want to see this server hacked. I barely want to see it accessible at all on the web. So I want it to be in a strong CRM tool. Um, in the event registration process that we do with a lot of nonprofit organizations and advocacy groups, they want to be able to bring this data in in real time, be able to analyze it. Um, form building, people may have used um, different Joomla-based form options or web tools like uh, Wufu or Form Assembly. There's a number of them out there. Any time where you're collecting data, I just feel like it's a challenge if you're leaving that data in Joomla, or even if you're just putting it into a spreadsheet. It's just, it's data in another silo that you don't have access to being able to quickly generate reports and dashboards for you to make strong business decisions. Business intelligence, uh, I just said reporting again, and dashboarding. Okay. So here's how we've done it at PicNet. This is how we've seen other I think there's one other Joomla business that has been working with this type of integration. Uh, so for developers in the room, this is how we found a really successful pattern that I think you could follow uh, to make these Joomla to CRM integrations successful. So first of all, these integrations started with two basic types of plugins. The, the first plugin we built uh, was a library that does the authentication. So Salesforce uh, uses SOAP. Um, and allows us to go ahead and make very specific calls to it so we can make sure there's a secure connection between the website and the CRM tool. Because we're going to be handling some pretty important information. We might be pushing back and forth uh, credit card information, valuable uh, consumer contact information. We want this to be secure and stable and have really robust um, transaction processes to make this effective. Uh, the next one is on a component by component basis, we need to be able to make sure that as data is coming into a component, it knows where to be mapped in the CRM service. 
So we built a plugin for each of the different components that we want to do unique integrations with. And the first time we did this, uh, we did it mostly for um, user records. So we've built a, um, a set of components and plugins that allow somebody to log into your Joomla-based website to find and show their data that's being stored in your CRM tool, being able to edit their own contact information so that if you send an email blast off asking people, uh, is this still your correct mailing address? Do I still have your correct contact information? Uh, you don't need to receive an email and then pay somebody to go ahead and then re-enter that data into the CRM tool. They should be able to self-service uh, this process. And what we had done is we'd made it so that each one of these plugins was directly coupled with a component. And the problem is that it's not really flexible and it meant that every time we wanted to change something in the component to add a new feature, we then had to go to the plugin and make those changes as well so that the data could be mapped properly. I'd encourage people that are looking to do something like this to try to make these plugins between your components and your CRM service uh, as generic as, as you can while still keeping the important application workflow along the way. And I'll show some examples to that, but once you do that, then you don't have to worry about continually updating these plugins and these libraries because you've made it more flexible. So yes, so we've built uh, components, say our, um, our Soapbox events component or our Soapbox donations component that are handling the workflow. Uh, and then the modules. So for nonprofit organizations, maybe you want to show um, your top 10 individuals that have given this month or in the last 30 days. Well, you could do that if you stored all that data in your Joomla website's database, but that's, I think that's dangerous. Like, I don't want my donor data to be sitting on a shared server somewhere. So what we needed to do is to find a way to have that stored in the, in the CRM service and then have a very dynamic website that I can show a leaderboard. I can show who are the top 10 contributors to my campaign for this month and have fireworks go off on their page or whatever we need. I can do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising where I can have people log in and set a fundraising goal for my nonprofit organization and then go out to the world and ask their friends and family to give to my organization. And then all that data lives in your CRM tool and we just display it. It's just, Joomla becomes just an application view layer or just a portal for us to be able to view the data that's in the CRM service. Uh, so I call this turducken Joomla style for those of you uh, that don't know what turducken is. Turducken is the wonderful thing that happens when you uh, wrap a turkey and a duck and a chicken together into one ridiculously amazing American meal. This really happens. Is this true, Jeremy? Have you heard of turducken? It really happens. I don't know if that's popular elsewhere, but that's, that's what we do overseas. Um, so what we have here is Salesforce with Joomla turducken style, <laughs> mashed up together, but in a pretty visually pleasing experience. When you look at this screen here, this is, this is the, uh, the Soapbox Engage application we've made. This is Joomla, uh, and we've been able to go within Salesforce itself, integrate it under a tab, so that somebody can now say, okay, well, within my soapbox, I can manage my events, I can manage my donations, I can manage all of my credit card processing through one screen, and if I'm dealing in the CRM, if I'm the person that lives in the CRM service all day long, I feel comfortable that there is a UI that allows me to manage this data. On the flip side, you can give these types of UI pages to just the web managers so that they can feel comfortable in saying, I want to make uh, a new payment page or I want to make a new event page. And I'm, I'm concerned and I don't want to worry about the things that are happening in this very important cloudy CRM world. I just want to focus on the web presentation. So by having those two things separate, you're also setting up your business for success because people that are very comfortable with the website, but very scared of anything that has a dollar sign or accounting related to it, can now have separate views as to how they're managing data that's coming in and out uh, of the organization's um, database. 
So some examples of, of this goodness and what this looks like. Uh, I'll, I have a couple that I'll go through here. I come from the nonprofit world, so all of my examples have to do with people that uh, aren't necessarily uh, in a profit-making enterprise, so I don't have a lot of, uh, of sales analysis to show you. I've got these examples, and if we have some others that we'd like to talk through or think about, I'd love to, to make that happen. So on a payment processing uh, situation, let's talk about uh, donations in a nonprofit sense, bringing in data from the website. Uh, so we have a way to manage all the different donation pages that you have uh, within your website. You can show different contact, uh, contact content information. We have a taxonomy service that we that we built called Terms and Taxonomy that allows people to go ahead and, and categorize their data in important uh, ways. But what's critical, and for developers in the room, what I was talking about earlier with components and plugins is this integrations tab. That tab says integrations. And at first we thought, well, you know, we're going to build one integration with Salesforce because we really were counting on that to work, and it, and it has. Um, and so we started to hard code that CRM integration. And what we realized is that there were a number of other donor management services out there that looked interesting to our clients. And because we're coming from the website world, we didn't necessarily want to say, you must use Salesforce or you must use Sugar. So we really found ways to make our integrations, um, again, as, as generic as possible. So we now have this drop down on the left that it says Salesforce integration, but we're going to add other services over time. So maybe there'll be a service for Sugar CRM, uh, Blackbot, and a number of other CRMs are in our nonprofit community. And with the Salesforce or with any other CRM service, what you'll want to do is to find a way to map the data that's coming in from your website into your CRM tool, and the way you do that is normally through something called campaigns. So in that big workflow that I was showing you earlier, there's ways in which you're grabbing data, and the normal way that you do it in a CRM service is through campaigns, and all we're doing is we're saying a campaign can be anything from uh, a specific call to action for somebody to buy my product on a particular page of my website, or to give a donation. Uh, or to sign up for an event. Those are all individual campaigns. Those are me asking somebody to give us money. And all we need to do between our Joomla site and our CRM tool is just to say, what campaign is this related to so we can do some data analysis from it. Uh, so we do the same thing with events. We built a, a full Joomla-based event management tool. Um, and now I can go into real demo time. Okay. Oh, the screen is much smaller. Okay. Wow, this is going to look really ugly. <laughs> Let's see here. What is it? It's uh, command negative. Okay. Great. Uh, so just to give you a couple of examples so we can think about this and then talk about some others as we're wrapping up our time here. Uh, so we want organizations to be able to make donation pages, really uh, engaging calls to action so they can embed video and they can show uh, whales jumping out of the sea. Um, if I scroll down here, uh, in this section here for contact information, this is your lead data. This is just lead data. This is data that will go into the CRM service that somebody else, if necessary, can pick up a phone uh, and talk to this person. We want to make it easy for them to, to choose the value of what they're giving. Uh, and then down below, we're thinking about the payment process. Um, what in, in Europe, what is the, the most popular gateways, payment gateways for credit cards? Is it like WorldPay or PayPal? OK. Um, WorldPay is one of them as well. So. The other part of this kind of jigsaw of services that you want to think about connecting together uh, is something having to do with any online payments. So the workflow that we have is that somebody will come to this page, they'll read this very compelling text data from the organization, they'll give them their contact information, you want to be able to scale that so that they can ask more questions. 
Uh, then you have them collect their payment in information here. And then when they make their donation, what needs to happen in the workflow is that you need to make sure that data is securely going to the gateway. We need to check to make sure it's a success. And if it is, come back to your Joomla-based website, throw up some sort of a congratulations page or a thank you page, and then send that data directly into your CRM service. Um, being able to make sure that workflow happens really smoothly is, is important because you want to collect all that financial information in your CRM tool so you have one place where all those receipts are effectively being stamped in there. Uh, same thing through, uh, you can think about this for your events systems as well. So if you're tracking any sort of event registration data, you can really easily share that with your CRM tool. Uh, this happens to be but what we've built. Um, in this process here, you're able to have different ticketing levels. Within your CRM service, you should be able to define if people are part of different groups. So if you want to give somebody a special discount because they are a loyal customer, or give somebody special preferential treatment because they're a member of your organization, we need to be able to make that uh, knowledge available to Joomla. So while we're porting all of our information now from Joomla 1.5 to 2.5, we get to actually use all this ACL that's in Joomla 2.5 that gives us very granular access to giving people the ability to see, say, different ticketing levels because they're you know, a, a good standing member and they've paid all their membership dues. Um, so thinking about the way in which data from your CRM service would talk to something like uh, ACL for permissions and management uh, is important. And we found that Joomla 2.5 and beyond is really making it easy for us to, to be able to do this. Um, if I go to this next tab here, the workflow, when somebody clicks on the event and says, yes, I'm going to register for it, it's similar. You'll find this across all of the different integrations you're doing with your CRM tool. They have basic contact information, financial information, and then some sort of transactional information. Are they buying a product from you? Are they registering for an event? Those are the three key things you'll find in all of these different handshakes you have between your tools. Uh, and then down below here, finding ways to make that interaction on the website as slick and as seamless as possible, we've, we found is very useful. So if I say, oh, I want three of these free tickets, nothing happens. But if I say I want four of these paid level tickets, it goes ahead and uh, adds up my total, displays the billing information, and goes through that same process of talking to the gateway, making sure the credit card is valid, and then sending off the data to the CRM service. Just, uh, oops, for our nonprofit and advocacy friends in the room, uh, a lot of us are trying to help organizations uh, make calls to action, you know, write your member of parliament, write your member of Congress, push for change. Uh, you can do that by having a web page and being able to, say, fill out this form and then s just have the data go somewhere in your Joomla database. But then it just, sits there, you can't really analyze it. There's not a lot you can do and it's stuck in another silo. Uh, so integrating it with your CRM tool on, on the middle, you have your basic call to action. <laughs> Dear Congressman Dirty, please help save our river. You know, again, we're getting all the basic contact information we need here. But then up above, because you've built modules that talk to your CRM service, in real time, we're getting data coming back from the CRM service showing us who has signed this petition, whose friends of yours have signed this petition, how can you easily send this petition to somebody else? And all of this data shouldn't be stored in your website. It needs to be stored in your CRM tool so you can be doing the analysis on this. So you can see there's lots of ways even on just one page where it might just start off as a very basic form but to really get somebody to take action, you might need this real-time data to show like what's, what's happening behind the scenes and, and who are the other people that are engaging with this organization. Uh, and, then, and then finally two, uh, okay, great. 
two other quick things to show you. One is if you have a database, uh, a CRM service that has open APIs and allows you to talk to it, uh, you can build lists like this. So a lot of our organizations have really crazy sets of data that they want to manage. And we're like, oh my gosh, that means uh, a custom component in Joomla and a couple of MySQL tables and let's, let's make it, you know, third order normalized and oh my God, this is, we just added 60 to 100 hours onto your project because you want like five new views on your website and we have to spin up, you know, new database tables to make that happen. Um, if you're able to have a more flexible CRM service that just allows you to create new objects, then you can go through the process of just creating new views and you can generalize that whole view survey search process and then just have it talk to your database in the sky where you don't have to worry about managing data or have it being set in a, <clears throat> in a separate data silo in your website. This data is coming in real time from the CRM service and is being managed by somebody that has nothing to do with the website. Uh, and then one last slide here, if I can get this screen to, no, it won't go down any smaller. Uh, what I was trying to show here is not the Muppets, but, and I can't log in because I'm now I'm offline. What I was just going to show you is that if you're able to talk to your CRM service through Joomla, you can be thinking about abilities for folks to, to log in and manage their own data and do things like directory services. So if you're working with membership-based organizations or if you want people to be able to see, for instance, where are the, you know, the 10 closest locations and what are they selling today? What's on sale today in my Frankfurt store versus what's on sale today uh, in my London stores? You don't want to have to go into Joomla to keep that data changed. That data should be managed by a totally different department that's working only in your CRM service and your web team is simply just displaying the data. And it's just being generic and is making it easy for people to search all of the different locations your business might have and then to show information about those locations in real time. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping you guys can take away from this is that Joomla is terrific. It's a lot more powerful if you treat it as a web front end and then save your data somewhere else that can be more securely managed, that can allow you to do analysis and help us to run uh, more profitable businesses. And I think we're at the bottom of the hour and kaput, right? Excellent. Any, any brief questions? I can talk afterwards as well. None? Okay, thank you.